Hey guys, it's Mike from Church Tech Arts here, and I uh, just thought, uh, I know I told you that I was probably not going to be posting a whole lot because uh, I'm kind of taking a sabbatical, but had a great opportunity come up uh, with uh, this new console from Digico, and we just had to shoot a little video on it. So this is the new Digico SD12. If you've been watching my social media feed, you know that uh, Digico was kind enough to drop this off on my birthday, and um, I'm hoping that they're going to let me keep it as just a birthday present for all the support I've provided them over the years. Probably not, but it'd be really nice if they did because I got to tell you, I've kind of grown fond of this thing in the last week. So it's an SD console, so it still runs the same Stealth Core 2 processing that uh, all the other SD consoles have. What they've done, this is kind of a unique console. They've sort of taken the two outside wings of an SD5, cut the center out, and smushed it together. So uh, if you're familiar at all with the SD5, um, You've got three screens. The outside two uh, screens and fader banks can operate completely independently of each other. And then you've got the center section, which is another fader section, fader tile section, and a master screen, which kind of gives you access to all of the master type stuff, your effects and your options and snapshots and all the administrative kind of things that you would need while you're mixing a show. But your outside two screens always stay set up as channel strips. And like I said, you can operate them independently on the SD5, which is really cool for like a, a festival kind of a situation where you might have to come in with a monitor engineer and a front of house engineer. They can work simultaneously, independently of each other without getting in each other's way. One guy could be doing monitors, going through all the aux sends, getting that dialed in while the front of house guy is getting in the main, the front of house mix dialed. So really cool from that standpoint. So this console operates very similarly to that. Um, with the exception of you don't have the center screen, so this screen over here on the right kind of functions as your master slash um, left right channel bank. So you can kind of do it either way. But again, they operate completely independently. So you could have two people standing side by side, complete uh, channel strip controls, EQ, dynamics, aux sends, all that stuff completely independently along with two fader tiles. So that's all really, really cool. But they've done some things on this console that in this small, tight form uh, factor that I really, really like that makes it very fast to get around on. So we're going to kind of do sort of an overview of the surface here and show you what, those, what these controls are and how it's all laid out. So again, this console is kind of an amalgamation. It's a little bit, they, they took some things from the SD5, whereas again, you've got the two completely different units, but then you've also got, because we don't have, um, with the SD8 and the SD10, you've got a row of encoders up here and you've got three rows of encoders down here. The five also has additional encoders. This, it's a little bit tighter form factor. So they took a page out of the SD9 playbook and gave you these quick assign uh, buttons up here for what these encoders are going to be. So right now I'm in gain mode. So this encoder becomes a gain encoder. Uh, now it's a low pass. Now it's a high pass. Now it's dynamic, dynamic two. Now I can cycle through my auxes, and then I've got pan. And then you can also, of course, like a Digico, you can make these whatever you want to be um, by just pre pressing the assign and telling it what to do. So uh, very fast, very customizable. You can set it up for how you want to work. Um, in this case, they've got this one set up as pan, but I could just as easily make these my auxes so that now I've got you know two ch sets of aux encoders to cycle through down here, but then I can very quickly get back to my high pass filter. So very quick, very easy way to get around it. Um, so the encoders, the buttons, everyone, you know, lines up exactly with the channel, like a typical Digico. Um, coming over into here, you've got some additional controls. Obviously you've got the touch and turn, so you can touch any parameter and um, you can just turn that parameter. Actually, that's not a good example. Um, touch, turn, and it goes. So you've got that, but then you've also got some of these hard mute uh, buttons. Uh, you've got insert A and B on direct in and out. So again, some uh, hard controls to be able to turn things on and off um, very quickly uh, if you need to be able to do that, access things like that. Um, then you've got a full channel strip set of controls here. You've got uh, dedicated knobs for your selected channel threshold and gain for dynamic one on, dynamic two on or off with threshold control, full EQ setting, uh, all your eight knobs or uh, 12 knobs for that with the ability to turn the EQ on and off and then dedicated high pass and low pass filters as well as a dedicated selected channel aux or alternate in button up there as well. So if you're setting up for the two different uh, alternate main alternate ends, uh, you can select that very quickly up there. 
And as we come around here a little bit more, we've got the basic snapshot. It's kind of a little bit more compact than we've seen in other consoles. They've, it took me a little bit to kind of get used to the layout of the buttons, but everything is here. Uh, you've got forward and backward snapshots. You've got fire, so you can scroll to a snapshot and fire it directly. Uh, you can undo. Um, you update, auto-update, things like that, insert new. And then you can even take the surface offline to go through and kind of preview your snapshots, which is kind of cool. Uh, typical solo one and two, just like all your digital consoles with uh, dedicated uh, single, multiple, and clear buttons up there. Um, Talkback, so you've got A and B Talkback for two outputs for that, as well as your headphone amp. But up here, this is one of my favorite features, and you guys know, uh, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know I love my Digico macros. Um, this one gives you five macro buttons and five banks of macro buttons. So you can actually do 25 different macros um, built up on here. Um, I've done one where you can do multiple states of macros. So I've got this one set up as main on versus uh, solo out through my matrix. So I'm basically turning channels on and off in my matrix. Notice the color changes depending on which state it is in. So I can very quickly um, see what I'm doing. And then I've got some other things up there to save the show file real fast, for example, or turn all my EQs on or all my comps on or off. Um, all very, very easy to set up in this console. And, you know, if you've ever played with the uh, Digico uh, macro language, the amount of things that you can do in here is just staggering when you dig into a channel or dig into a macro. Almost every single thing on the console can be set into a macro or automated in some way through a macro. So really, really cool for setup. It's kind of a more advanced user feature, but um, I tell you what, I get so spoiled with it. When I work on another console, I really wonder where my macros are because I use them so much. So everything else with the console is basically what you're used to on an SD. Um, you may not be able to tell in the video very well, but they've kind of flattened out the interface. They've updated the whole interface this year. This is across all the SD consoles. So things like, um, you know, EQ has always been there. You can still do the EQ blow up. You do have the ability to move uh, EQ with touch. Uh, which we've always had. New to uh, this uh, version of software are these new graphs, which show you the uh, comps. Uh, and especially cool if you go into a multiband comp, you get all full graphical representations of what's going on with your comp, um, as well as all the controls down here to do that. Uh, very, very cool. Very easy to explain to people, especially if you're training volunteers, how to use some of this stuff, what it does, um, and how to use it. Um, very, very cool to be able to cycle through and graphically see what you're doing. Same thing with your effects. Um, if you bring up an effect and uh, throw the graph up there, find one that has a graph, uh, you can actually see kind of the, the pre-delay and the, the early reflections and all the visual representation of what's going on in that effect. So very cool being able to do that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much everything I've always loved about the SD12 with a slightly updated interface. Um, just a prettier, a little bit flatter, kind of more modern uh, user interface. And again, same classic Digico sound quality with all my favorite stuff with the snapshots. Still the best snapshot uh, engine in the world. Um, only ones that I know of that do macros that can do what this thing can do. And again, with enough dedicated buttons on the surface to be able to get around very, very fast. I would, in a heartbeat, if I was out touring uh, with a band doing festivals all summer long, I would pick this desk in a heartbeat. I can pick it up by myself. Um, it's easy to move around. Um, incredibly powerful. You can look up all the specifics on the channel count. It's, it's too much to mention in terms of uh, input output channels, but all the channels can be mono or stereo. All the groups can be mono or stereo. All the auxes can be mono or stereo. You've got Digitube on every single channel. Um, you've got multiband, dynamic EQ, every single channel, every single output across the board. It's the whole Stealth 2 package. So incredibly capable console. Pair this up with the SD racks and you've got an amazing sounding system at a pretty aggressive price point too. This is pretty solid what they're doing with this thing. So I'm a big fan and um, I would definitely take this thing in a heartbeat. And now I'm going to go answer the phone. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back later.